Cortana, all I need to know is did we lose them? I think we both know the answer to that. Welcome back to another shipbuilding guide for Starfield. Today, we're going to be doing the long-awaited Pillar of Autumn. I've made some community posts in the past week, and you guys have been loud and clear on what you guys want to see with almost a 1,000 votes and a vast majority of these votes pointing towards the Pillar of Autumn. I also want to thank you guys for your support on my most recent video, the guide to remake the Expanse's Rosinante and Starfield. I try to read and reply to as many comments as I can, and I got to say, you guys have been giving some incredible feedback. I don't want to hold us up too long, though, so without further ado, let's get right into the Pillar of Autumn build guide. All right, we are in here in the ship builder. We've got the Pillar of Autumn here. I'll give you some spins around. With the Commerce perk level one, the ship's going to cost you around 386,000 credits. Without Commerce level one, you'll be closer to 400,000 credits. We've got a crew capacity of 10, a cargo capacity of 1,260, a jump distance of 18 light years, and a shield capacity of 1,450. Now, this ship is C-class, and it really acts like it. It's got almost 1,000 damage across all missile platforms, and a ballistic turret damage of 53. Although this does mean you'll need piloting level four, and you'll also need at least starship design level one. And you can tell we've really optimized this one because the power on the ship systems have been almost completely maxed out on all levels. You will need to do a little bit of power management in combat, but from my experience, it hasn't been too much trouble. Now go ahead and settle in and we're gonna start by blowing up the Pillar of Autumn. All right, we've got the autumn exploded here. We're going to be doing this a little differently than all my other tutorials. Uh, this one, just due to the sheer size of the ship, it's quite literally a pile of habs. We're going to be splitting it up into levels, starting with the lowermost level with the landing gears and landing bay. So we'll start from the back here. We've got a ship bed 200 landing bay facing the front with one horizon weapon mount on either side. I left these empty. And then behind that, we've got a Deimos companionway one by one. On top of that, we've got a Deimos companionway one by one again. And just over the shipbed 200, we've got a Deimos hull A. And then behind the lowermost companionway, we've got one, two, three Aculander 11 landing gears. And on either side, we've got two tails, also composed of Aculander 11 landing gears. And then along both sides here, on either side, we have three Degama 1000 shielded cargo holds. Again, you don't have to go with shielded. I went with shielded personally because I don't want to get pulled over by the cops for carrying around some organs. And then on the top, we've got three more Degama 1000 shielded cargo holds. And you'll finish off your first level by adding a 100 DP slim docker bottom to the bottom of your Deimos companionway right behind the shipbed 200 landing bay. And that is the entirety of the first level. For level two, we've got three Stroud Cowling 1LA-PBs on this side. Make sure when you flip them, you get the ones with the ridge that's facing outward from that side. And then on the other side, we've got three more Stroud Cowling 1LA SBs. And that makes a total of six Stroud Cowlings, three on the top, gap in the middle, three on the bottom. Connecting those, you'll put a Deimos hull A. And then on that, you'll put a Deimos brig 2x2 with a Deimos control station 2x1 right underneath it. And then on the back of that, you'll put a Deimos hull A, a Supernova 2000 engine and another Deimos hull A. And then on either side, you're gonna have two Tayo side caps with a horizon weapon mount with your weapons of choice. And I've got an Adelatl 280A missile launcher on mine and a CE-49 missile launcher. And then of course, all of those are going to be mirrored on the other side. 
Now we'll go ahead and double click that, slide it on over, and it falls right into place. Now we've got the first level and the second level finished. We'll move on to level three. For level three, we've got a Deimos Cargo Hall 3x3, which can be found at the Deimos Star Yard in Seoul. Behind that is a Deimos Battle Station 2x2, also from the Deimos Star Yard. In the corner between those is a Deimos Armory 2x1. And then on the back, we've got two Deimos Hull A's with a gap in between. Go ahead and double click that. Slide it over. That slots in right on top. Now onto level three. For level three, we've got a Deimos Mess Hall 3x2. 3x2 is very important because that determines which direction it's facing. This one's going to be facing front to back. And then we've got a Deimos All-in-One Berth 3x1. And then continuing from the 3x1, we've got a Deimos All-in-One Berth 2x1. On top, we've got a Deimos Science Lab 2x1. Then we've got three Deimos Hull A's right down the middle. An SF-10 Sheared Flow Reactor that's going to require piloting rank 4. Behind that's an NG-300 Grab Drive that's going to require Starship Design rank 1. And then at the back here, we've got a Deimos Hull A. On the left side is a White Dwarf 2020 engine. On the right side is an M40 Ulysses HE3 tank. And then it's mirrored to the other side. And that's your fourth level finished. Editor's note, I lied. There is also another M40 Ulysses HE3 tank behind each White Dwarf 2020 engine located right about here. Sorry about that. And we'll go ahead and slide her on over. And that's your fourth level done. Now moving on to level five, we've got three Stroud Cowling 1L APTs, three Deimos Hull A's, two Tayo Sidecaps port, and it's gonna be mirrored to the other side, exactly the same. Go ahead and double click that, double click that. Slide it down. And that slots in right on top. And then moving on to the top level, it's almost entirely structural. We've got a Stroud Nose Cat B for top. On top of that, I decided to put a Mahler 106T auto cannon. Again, the weapons are completely up to you. Behind that, we've got a Stroud mid bracer. Behind that, we've got two Deimos Hull A's with a Vanguard Bulwark Shield Generator right on top here. On either side of this Deimos Hull A, we've got Deimos Wing E's, one port aft, one starboard aft. On the sides of those, I decided to put Mahler 106T autocannon turrets. And back here, we've got two Stroud Cowling 1L A's. This side's PT, other side is ST. And on the back, we've got a Supernova 2000 engine. Go ahead and double click, slide this all back, and that caps off your rear section. Now we're gonna move on to the cockpit section, starting from the bottom. We've got a Deimos computer core two by one. And on the two snap points at the front, we've got a Horizon weapon mount. I elected an Adelatl 280A missile launcher and a CE-49 missile launcher on either side. Behind that, we've got a Deimos hull A. And then up one level, we've got a Deimos control station two by one, right above that two by one computer core. And behind the control station, we've got a Deimos storeroom one by one. On top of that, we've got a Deimos Hull A. Moving back one, we've got a Stroud Companionway one by one. And on the front, we've got a Contiki B300 bridge. You can find that at the Stroud Eklund shipyard. On top, we've got a two by one captain's quarters from Deimos. And right on the back here, we've got a Deimos Hull A. Now we'll go ahead and get these structural components. We've got a Stroud engine bracer A. Attached to the side of that is a Tayo side cap port. Same for the other side, Stroud engine bracer A, Tayo side cap starboard. Go ahead and double click that. That connects to the back snap point on the Deimos control station two by one, right under this companionway. And it's gonna be the same for the other side. We'll double click it, snap it on there, and you're good to go on those little fins. And then right here, we've got another M40 Ulysses HE3 tank. And on both the top and bottom, we've got Tayo side cap ports. We'll go ahead and bring all these in. And those will snap just behind that Stroud engine bracer A right there. Go ahead and do the same with the other side. Slide it on over, and the bridge section is complete as well. I'd also like to add, if you want a more game accurate cockpit placement, I'll show you how to do that now. Otherwise, skip to the time on the screen. You'll start by deleting the Contigi B300 bridge, the companion way behind it. You'll take this captain's quarters and move it down one. Delete this Deimos hull A. And then you'll grab all three of these components on the side, move them down one. Do the same with the other side. Move them down one. Right down here at the bottom, it'll attach to this a Viking CP100 cockpit. Then you'll delete this Deimos hull A above the landing bay and replace that with the Deimos companionway one by one. Now all we gotta do is double click that, move it on back, and your Pillar of Autumn is complete in all her glory. 
Just don't go and crash it like the last guy that flew it. Anyway, guys, I think I came out with a pretty nice recreation of the Pillar of Autumn. Uh, there were, of course, some restrictions in the way, as they usually are. But I'd say I did a pretty good job with what I had. Go ahead and leave a like if you guys liked the video. Drop a comment and let me know how you feel. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. I'll be down in the comments answering questions for quite a while. But other than that, I'm going to leave you guys with some gameplay. And I'll see you in the next one.